it's early morning and it's Christmas time and it's starting to feel like Christmas time because today I get to trap one of my favorite species in the world with one of my favorite people in the world down here in Florida. And I'm getting to meet him for the first time in person just today. It's time to go find some turtles. Let's go. Hello. Howdy. Welcome. This just happened. <laughs> oh, I love your hoodie. Turtle room, represent. I promise I'm not trying to suck up. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Me either. This is awesome. Subscribe. All right. So we're here. It's still early morning. We're the first ones here. A lot of volunteers coming, but right now it's just Jordan and I. This is Jordan Danini, professor from South Florida. Florida Southwestern. Florida Southwestern State College. College. State College. State College. Gosh, get it FSW. together, Anthony. Just go with the three letters. What's important is he's wearing his turtle room hoodie this morning. And it looks amazing in that hot pink, by the way. It does. It I, does. Bet, I bet you get a lot of compliments. I do. This is actually like one of my most well-received pieces of apparel, so <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, happy, happy to help. Happy to help. <laughs> Not even trying to suck up. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here early. Are we just hanging out? No, we're doing something. What are we're we doing, Jordan? We're prepping some of our, our uh, little gear boxes for some sampling of turtles and salamanders this morning. Uh, we are hopefully going to catch at least one turtle species today and maybe two salamander species. Uh, we're kind of like in a, a, a less than diverse zone of salamander uh, biodiversity in South Florida, but we do get two of the largest species in the United States, the uh, uh, two-toed amphiuma and the greater siren, and we've got a few of those uh, tagged out here already. Uh, so hopefully we catch some new ones, catch some recaptures, and get some more data today. That's uh, wonderful. Hope, hopefully get a few striped mud turtles as well. So uh, Anthony can, uh, I, have you seen those in a while? Gabe? I have not. Okay, so it would be great to be able to check that off a while. And if we don't see them here today, I'll take you to some spots we can maybe shine them at night as well. So. Oh, that sounds amazing. <laughs> That's so cool. Anything? No. no. All six are empty. All six empty. So we got four more to find. Oh, yeah, Marilyn? Marilyn? This one's empty. Caught a fish. Caught a fish. Couple fish. <laughs> empty. Empty. Nada? Nada. This little fish. Apparently animals in South Florida don't like it when they get cold. <laughs> Who would have thought? Or when the water dries up. Or when the water dries up. We'll leave them in for a little bit and so we can six. peek on them again before we leave. So we just checked the 10 traps that we had set at this first location. There's two more in a different spot. So we're just heading over there right now as a group. The first 10, unfortunately, did not have anything in it. So definitely been there before. This is part of it. Uh, you're going out here. You're hoping you find what you're looking for. But, um, you know, you're ultimately taking a chance. It's been cold the last couple of days. And um, that's obviously impacted the reptiles and amphibians that we're looking for here so hopefully we have more luck at the next site the next spot but um right now we're just crossing our fingers i will alligator spot for a brave soul <laughs> <laughs> there's something in there yeah whether it's fish or turtle yeah i saw it move yeah. nothing uh, you can bring that full bring trap that. in yeah please hide it yeah. There was, it might have been a soft shell picking at it because there's a lot of soft shells in this pond. They could have just been picking at it. I saw it move too. Outside, there was something going at it. I think the cold weather just. Yeah. Agreeable. So, why are they trapping iguanas here? Iguanas are an invasive species in south florida you hear stories about how they fall out of the trees when it gets cold now it is cold here and that's why we're not finding much in our traps but it's not cold enough for uh, the iguanas to start falling out of trees otherwise we certainly wouldn't be trapping for turtles uh, they are trapping those iguanas to remove them because they are an invasive species uh, that shouldn't be out here Nothing? No. Golly. Complete strikeout. That one looks like it was set a little high. Yeah, it, it probably even got jostled with wind. Mm. <laughs> Such is the field life, unfortunately. Totally. Take them back to the cart and uh, just throw them on there. We'll leave the cart there. And then there's some 
some upland trails right back there that we can take a walk on. See if there's any uh, snakey action because those the diamondbacks actually are active this time of year. Gator poop. So traps were unsuccessful, unfortunately. I think it's a little bit of the, the cold weather uh, impacted the, uh, the ectotherms a little bit, um, even though this is not cold for most people <laughs> that are here today. Uh, for the, the herps, it got them a little cooler than we hoped for. So it might have uh, led to them not being able to find our traps, probably a little inactive, but it's all good. But there's still a lot of plenty of cool nature to see around here. And I'm gonna go look for some gopher tortoises at least. Maybe some down Sweet. Days. Sweet. No gopher tortoise out right now, but that's kind of the classic South Florida gopher tortoise burrow. They're not very pretty, the burrows down here. At what stage do gophers start burrowing? Media. Media. So hatchlings will go in, but are they, uh, they're digging in, yeah. but are they they'll like start, start creating a whole burrow? With a really little. Yeah. So the the hatchlings um, will like just like bury under like leaf litter and stuff, right. or like go onto the palmettos. Um, but we have dug up like hatchlings in burrows, and usually the burrows are like this is fun. That's so cool. You just that is a pretty classic go for burrows burrow. That's pretty nice one. It's so hard to see these on camera. <laughs> yeah, it's like like, the, like it just you just can't see the three dimensionality of it. It's gonna back this baby all the way out. Empty traps. This is called yeeting. So I'm super excited. News was we got totally skunked. We didn't catch anything in the traps and we didn't actually get any turtles, but we did catch something really cool. And I can't wait to see it. I've never seen one before. You pit tag these? Shush. Yeah, the cloaca. Yeah, the, um, the, the females will have a dark cloaca, uh, whereas the males, like the, the tissue around it will have a pink or like spotted. Yeah, white, sometimes white spotted, sometimes real pink. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it's pretty neat. Is that, um, do they have to be sexually mature to be able to determine that? It's a good question. This is the smallest one I've ever seen, so, <laughs> so we're gonna find out. You just have dark cloacas until they're mature to see, but again, there's, you wouldn't believe how little literature there is on, like, just general life history stuff like that up there. It's, it's like, this is like one of the most abundant salamanders in the southeastern United States and there's just not very much on them, especially in South Florida. So what Jordan was explaining is that in this book for his students, they have the drawings of the actual animals so, so they can go in here and actually draw where injuries and, and different items that they might want to mark occur on those specific animals that they're putting into the book that they're entering. And this is a new animal that uh, does not have a... We're, we're going to try a pit tag scan one more time. Okay. It's a little easier to actually put them in. We, so we, they're so slimy and covered in mucus, you can't just bare handle them. You have to put them in a, in a bag to yeah. actually properly use it. Yeah, I don't want to handle that. Yeah. Not that you asked, but... Yeah, they, uh, and yeah, they do have quite uh, the jowls. So a little one like this probably wouldn't do too much, but they still have those really, really sharp. Like, they, they rip and tear. Wow. And see if this one has any signs of it. But sometimes you can actually see... Uh, signs of injury from other amphibians. It looked like it had a tail nip, maybe? It definitely looks like there's a little tail nip on it, but sometimes you can actually see like mouth shaped wounds on them. Are those microchips are sitting micro in alcohol? They are. So that they're completely sterile? Sterile, yeah. Just That's really shit. cool. And you're using those little forceps just yeah. to put them in so I don't have to keep touching them with my hands. Our pit tags go right here. The base, sort of the base of the tail area. As you can see, I'm not getting anything. The whole process. So I'm going to stab him right now. Try to stab, try to stab him. Just pull, so there's this nice meaty tissue right there. Yeah. Get my tag closer. 
of the plane. Oh, you're tagging it. Yep, it's tagging. Whoa. That's what I said. <laughs> No pressure. <laughs> a little bit of blood. Did it? He squeaked, yeah. They make sounds. It just made oh, that noise. <laughs> you made him cry. I didn't even know they made noise. Okay, so we're in the car. We just left the first site where we were trapping for striped mud turtles and amphiuma and sirens. We did not get a bunch of the bookends of what I just said, but we did find an amphibian, which was awesome. What were your overall thoughts as someone who's out there a lot? Yeah, it was a, it was a little bit of a disappointing day. Um, our, our record, I think we had 15 salamanders one day. Um, so I was hoping to get those kind of numbers for y'all, but the, the cold weather and the dry weather seem to be influencing, you know, what is abundant in the wetlands and not. So um, unfortunate, but I am glad we had that surprise little amphibian, the smallest one of the study by far, was only 60 grams. So. That was really cool to see it. It seems like possibly a, a young female, so cute little thing. Um, hopefully we'll just see her again in a, in a couple months when we get back out there sampling it until the water's come back. So, but cool time. I'm just glad you got to see at least one. It was awesome. Yeah. But I think it was like so alien to me. I mean, I've always liked salamanders and, and newts and, and the like, and I've enjoyed finding them. We have several different species up in the Northeast, but seeing one like that. Yeah. That amphiuma was unlike anything that I've seen before. It really is like an eel and a salamander mixed. Yeah, some people call them Congo eels because they look so eel-like. I have no idea why they call them Congo eels. Uh, no relation to Africa whatsoever. <laughs> uh, and I've heard them called ditch eels in, uh, in Louisiana. That works. So yeah, so because they love like those little like ephemeral ditches and things like that. So pretty, pretty cool critters. That's cool. But I guess the moral of the story is sometimes you don't find everything you're looking for but you can really bask in the glory, pun intended, turtle, yeah. turtle word, uh, of what you do find and, and really you know, make the best of it. That was really cool. And the way that we found it too, last minute, like we, we thought that there was nothing in that last trap at the last moment, we just had one in there that we didn't even notice right away, which was really cool. So yeah, so far so good. And we're not done yet. Nope, so the one to go away. Cliffhanger. So I'm in the car with Jordan and we are on the way to look for some other stuff. We got done a little bit early, so we're just gonna, you know, bop around here, um, South Florida, definitely not telling you where, and see if we can find anything else. The weird things we do for turtles, hanging out in the back of a pickup truck, trying to see things. That's basically what's happening right now. Super cool. You're my hero. It was such a hard capture. Let's go! She's just cold. <laughs> wow. She's just really cold. She's uh, she wouldn't cold. move. This is like a Cute. close to 30 pound turtle. Now, is this one of these South Florida turtles that'll lay eggs year round? Um, soft shells don't do okay. that as far as we know, but they do have extended nesting. She's like I'm palpating her. Yeah, I, that's why I'm, I'm like, I can't pick up a female turtle and not palpate Look at job. She's Show this to Jack so he can see the face. Oh, I'm loving it. Pancake time. This is a Florida soft shell turtle. Jordan is, even though he's still recovering from surgery and injury, <laughs> was able to get in there like a ninja. Part of that is because this huge, big, big girl is actually cool. Uh, it's been cold in Florida the last few nights and she's much less ferocious than these are known to be. Now their species name, Ferox, actually means ferocious. So this is a really stressful situation for her, I'm sure. So we're gonna put her right back. But wow, what an amazing animal to see in Florida. This is the first time that I've ever handled a wild ferox. Super cool. She's big. That's a big, that's a bigger one. Yeah. There she goes. Very Goodbye, cool. my love. That Florida soft shell scratched me up. If you don't get scratched, you're not doing it right. That's what I say all the time with common snappers. Nice. Yes. There you go. Have you got peninsularis? Uh, not officially. I mean, I've seen them in the past, but okay. since I've started to try to be a herper, I don't have it on nice. my list. This is a peninsula cooter. We actually saw one of these 
recently. I wasn't sure if maybe this was a Florida cooter because these broad markings here on the costal scutes made it look like maybe it was a Florida cooter. But as you can see here, this this is a, a Peninsula cooter and uh, a beautiful one at that. A male, nice big male that was crossing the road while we were out here. So. We, we didn't find everything we were looking for today, but we definitely had a lot of success, and it's amazing to be out here in Florida. I've never been so happy to smell on an airplane, saying that preemptively. So, we weren't successful yesterday when we were out trapping for striped mud turtles, one of my favorite species in the entire world, and Jordan, my amazing host, who's treated me like an absolute king ever since I touched down in Florida, came out after family time here at night to bring me to a spot where there are striped mud turtles. So this is one of my favorite species in the world. I've never seen them in the wild. And now this trip comes to a close with me being able to see them, not only see them, but actually get my hands on them, which I'm not the best herper there is. That was awesome. And we also, as a little bonus, found a turtle that's extremely rare right here, which is the stink pot. Sternithorus odoratus, which is a turtle in many places, very small in Florida. And this is an adult female. And not only is she a, a big old adult, she also is gravid right now. So we can, we could put our fingers here in the um, inguinal fossae uh, in front of the back leg and, and feel those eggs inside her that are developed that she'll soon lay. But this is just an amazing experience. We've been out here for like 12 minutes and I'm good. This was great. Got the experience. I can't thank Jordan enough and thank you all for tuning in and, and rooting for us while we were out here. For the turtles. Woo! Hit subscribe and join the crew. Just turtles. There's always something new.